here with the Zero Family Bakery. So, first of all, you guys have been around since the 20s. Okay, tell me about some of your family history and how it keeps going. Our great grandfather came to uh, New York in 1927. Yeah. Came by himself, left his family in Poland, um, opened a bakery, and as he saved enough money, he brought the family over. Um, they all then would work in the bakery at night and go to school during the day. And um, throughout time, they expanded the bakery throughout the Bronx. Um, we ended up in Grand Central in 1977, um, and uh, at that point, our fathers the third generation took over the business and uh, that's where we are today. Um, so yeah, we have, you know, we're now a fourth generation family owned business uh, based out of the South Bronx. We have been manufacturing our bakery goods in Mott Haven since 1982. Uh, we have most of our bakeries are throughout New York City, Grand Central Terminal, Penn Station, Newark Penn Station, 501 7th Avenue, uh, and two new bakeries to come in the new Fulton Center uh, by the end of this year. So it's exciting stuff. What is your favorite part with like working with your family? Uh, I, I love the challenge. You know, there's always going to be ups and downs in working with your brothers and your cousin and your fathers. Um, but in the end of the day, not to get very cliche, we all, we all love each other, and the ultimate goal is just to grow and grow and 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 grow. Um, I love everything about it. It's nice, you know, days like this, we can come and take a picture with your whole family. You know, it's nice that you go into work and everyone you work with is your cousins, your fathers. So it's a lot of fun and just like to add what Mike said, we were the very first store in Grand Central. So it's something we're, we're excited about. Definitely. And what are some of your products like, you know, everything? Uh, we make everything. We have pastries, croissants, cakes. Um, cookies, scones, cupcakes, uh, everything's made in our in our Bronx bakery. Um, we have a bread line, we're launching a new bread line in a few weeks, yeah, very excited. Um, sorry, a lot of ums. We also, so I would say that we're most known for our black and white cookie, uh, and our chocolate babka and our rugala, which are, you know, staple Eastern European, you know, bakery traditions, our challah, our bagel. Um, but the black and white is great. You know, the black and white, most customers who shop in our stores or our bakeries every day, there's generally a story behind a black and white in terms of how they eat the black and white. Some people like to start on the vanilla side, some like to start on the chocolate side. You know, they bring one home and one daughter only likes the vanilla, one only likes the chocolate. Um, so it's always fun to have an interaction with customers every day and like hear their stories and, you know, how we impact their everyday life. Yeah. Very cool. What is your guys' favorite, like, bakery item? Uh, mine is the challah because it's just so much fun <laughs> to make. Sorry, there was someone who walked out. Mine's the because it's so much fun to make. They say they say no one braids like a zero, that's all. <laughs> uh, the rugula, which I'm going to give you a piece of raspberry rugula. I was going to get on one knee and do it, but I went against my better judgment. So. Hey guys, I'm here with Angela and John, and you guys have the best yogurt in New York. Tell me about it. Yes, actually, um, our yogurt is my family's recipe. I'm from Lebanon, and it's... No way! Oh my gosh! We're probably sisters. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so it's my family's recipe, and uh, so we only use three ingredients, milk, culture, and unprocessed sea salt. We strain naturally, and we don't add any sugar, thickeners, or preservatives. Yeah. That is so amazing. Okay, we're like on a whole new level of like bondedness already. Okay, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so like party. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so where are you guys located? Where can people find some of your yogurt and everything? Sure. Uh, our yogurt is uh, throughout Manhattan, Brooklyn, Westchester. We're in New Whole Foods in New England. We're going to be in Whole Foods soon in the city. And we're also on Amazon Fresh and Our Harvest online. We're opening our new store. We were in Chelsea Market for two years. Uh, we just left Chelsea Market. We're opening a new store by Columbia University. Oh, yeah. Cool. That's awesome. So, uh, what is your favorite part of like making the Greek yogurt and everything? I think it's seeing the reaction that people have to the yogurt. Like they've never tried just an amazingly thick, creamy, delicious yogurt. Particularly like plain yogurt. Like people have never enjoyed plain yogurt, but it's so amazing plain or with great toppings on it. You know, most often our customers say, "Oh my God, I'm so addicted to your yogurt." You know, it's a great response. Yeah, cool. Do you guys are you guys obsessed with your own yogurt? Like, do you have it all the time? Yes, our daughter eats it every day. I am here with Miss Michelle's cookies with Michelle and Christopher. How are you doing? Doing well yourself? I'm very good, thank you. So, 
Okay, what makes your cookies different from, you know, everyone else's cookies and, yeah. Sure, uh, I pride myself that they're gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, and the big thing that's different than the competitors is there's no artificial ingredients, and they last soft in the box for eight months due to the packaging. So I'm pretty happy that I do small batches. They're all handmade. It's not from a machine. They're from me and my company. So, yeah, I'm excited to be here. That's amazing. So why, like, did you, do you know, just, like, baking cookies or like how did that start? Well, uh, long story short, I was a public school teacher and in the summer I would teach kids how to cook. Um, I left teaching to follow my dream which was baking and uh, a lot of the students I was teaching had too many allergies and uh, I wanted to make sure that they could learn how to cook as well as eat something healthy and delicious. So it took off from there. We started in farmers markets and now we're in the stores so it's just amazing. That's amazing. I know being gluten free is like a trend or something these days and like a lot of people have different allergies or something. Yeah, and I, I even heard when I was like setting up, this one lady came over because like she heard they were gluten free. So, uh, how is that different, and what is like the benefits to having gluten free cookies versus like regular cookies? Sure, um, I like to equate it to it's almost like when you have something like sushi where it's all natural, you don't feel very full or you don't feel sick after having like a full meal. Um, I really cater to the people that have celiac, um, but now a lot of people, like you said, are doing it because it's the thing to do. It's gluten free, but it is uh, easier to digest because there is no uh, there's no wheat so it takes the wheat out of the cookie and you could use anything from like chickpea flour rice flour so it's more digestible is the right answer yeah where can people find and purchase your cookies sure so on our website always uh, www.missmichelles.com and we're offering free shipping in the month of October um, and you could also find them in Suffolk County and Nassau County as well hey guys I'm here with Brandon so tell me about your uh, your product uh, so I'm Brandon. I'm the brewery ambassador for Peekskill Brewery. We're a brewery that's been open for about seven years, been distributing for about three. Uh, we've won multiple awards for uh, like TAP, uh, Best Beer of New York at uh, TAP New York, and won silver medal at, uh, for Pale Ales at Great American Beer Festival in Denver. So we're definitely a brewery that's on the map. We're just very small. We only distribute three of our brands out of the 20-odd beers that we make. So uh, our idea is to kind of bring a little bit of what we do down to the city in different parts of New York, and then hopefully that entices them to come up and spend their days or their nights off with us at the brewery, you know? So, if people want some really good beer, where can they where can they find all of your locations? Uh, I mean, all of our locations. You always use uh, different apps like uh, Beer Culture or Untapped. They'll kind of uh, update their beer menus. But we're in. Uh, but we're primarily in the terms of the five boroughs, mostly in Manhattan and Brooklyn. Uh, some locations in Queens as well, and some in the Bronx. But um, you know, we're at locations similar to Blind Tiger, um, Crimson and Rye, to the Jeffrey, to places in Brooklyn like uh, Bergen and uh, Greenwood Park, um, King Thai. So you can definitely find us around at your popular craft beer bars or restaurants, uh, but that tends to be our main focus. We don't uh, bottle or can at the moment, so uh, you can't go into your local beer store and buy our product, but I'm sure if uh, you go to a, like you know places around these boroughs that uh, we'll be able to find our product at. Hey guys, I'm here with Van Train, so tell me about the Green Mustache. I know I've seen you guys before, so just tell me about the products. Yeah, so Green Mustache is a lot of organic green smoothies. There are two cups of kale and spinach in each bottle and we blend so you get all that fiber that juicing leaves behind. Um, and then we very recently or actually early next year are going to launch a new line of crackers, mustache munchies. Um, they're vegan, gluten free and are made with kale and chia. So they're goldfish inspired but in the shape of a mustache and they're a little heartier. They have more of a little crunch to them. Yeah, that's amazing. So tell me about all of your different smoothies because you have like different ones like are they sweeter? Like what? Sure. So we have six flavors of smoothies: strawberry, banana, and mixed berry. Mask the greens well, and their traditional, you know, flavor profiles are very comforting and familiar with people. Um, orange mango is one of my favorites. It's a little more green tasting, uh, but very refreshing. Uh, and then tropical twist has guava and passion fruit, which is nice because it's different. You don't typically see those fruits. Uh, carrot orange has a nice kick of ginger if you like ginger. And then oh soy good has nine grams of plant-based protein. Uh, um, but it's not very sweet. It's the least sweet of all of our flavors, so it's um, a little more mild in flavor. A bit of an acquired taste. Yes. I'm here with Nancy, so tell me about your like brownies. Like, Tell me about this. Well, I have a terrible sweet tooth, and I'm also very interested in healthy food, so I wanted to make something that I could eat and would satisfy my sweet tooth, and I wouldn't feel terrible about eating afterwards. So
So I uh, got to work in the kitchen and about a year later finally came up with um, some brownies and blondies that are chickpea and black bean based. And they're vegan, gluten-free, only good stuff. They're also made an allergen-free facility. They have no corn, soy, nuts, anything like that. So they're as about as sweet as it can get, but it's also like the healthiest thing ever. So is that pretty what you're much, saying? Pretty much. I mean, they really, I wanted something that actually tasted like a treat rather than something that was a kind of a substitute for a treat. So um, yeah, so they're trying to make them moist, delicious, and very chocolatey. <laughs> Chocolate is always good, so that, that's perfect. Where can people find your brownies and blondies? Right now, um, I'm selling online from puregeniusprovisions.com, and also I'm in stores in the tri-state area and actually in the, on the East Coast in general. Hey guys, I'm here with Aaliyah with Make My Cake. Okay, first of all, I like I, your booth is the first one I came up to because I was like, look at these cakes. Okay, so tell me how you got started and all that. Uh, this, our company started in the home. My mom started when I was a little girl. Home-based business that became phenomenal with doing decorated cakes, as you see. But we also, without, in our retail bakery, which opened 20 years ago, we're celebrating 20 years of baking sweet memories, is catering to all flavors of southern desserts, pies, layered cakes, puddings, we have a signature banana pudding that you have to come up to. And, and mentioning coming up to, we have two stores. We have two stores, one on 116th and St. Nicholas Avenue, the other on 139th and 7th. And we have a website that, that lists a lot of our products. But we also do things on a weekly basis that we like to keep our clients surprised and engaged. So we will use local vendors to produce products. Like for the holidays, we use a local vendor for our bourbon pound cake. So yes, one of the Hudson, um, Hudson Valley um, pro, um, producers. So we do, we try to be very sustainable. There's something that was instilled in us from my grandmother. So it was really important that we stay true to our heritage of baking. And you'll find that through our products, through our employees, and definitely with our clients. They're very well received with all of what we do. Yeah, definitely. So how did you learn to decorate cakes? Like, look at these, They're, like that's insane. Did you just like go to classes or did you, do, like your mom taught? My mom taught me. I was, I was the one who said I probably wasn't gonna do this professionally, but it was handed to me and I mean, I, I, I embraced it and saw a lot of vision for my company. And you know, having a family run business, there's, you could wear so many different hats. Um, my brothers are involved, um, you know, soon my niece and nephews and my, my children will be involved. But there's, you know, as far as perfecting a craft, you have to constantly keep investing in yourself. Um, you have to be at venues like this. You have to be, you know, keep reinventing and exposing your brand, um, bringing on team members who are passionate about what we do and also add value. So, I mean, we don't know everything, but we bring in team members who are very versed in decorating and baking. Um, so, very happy on the path that we're on and very good th great things ahead. Yes, definitely. Now, like, uh, either, you know, kids or teenagers, whatever, they want to get into baking. How, what would you, like, what advice would you give them? I would give them the advice of, similar to what I did, you know, similar to what my mom showed me. Start at home. Today, there's so many resources, n nowhere near compared to what I was, I had the opportunity to do 25 years ago. There are craft stores that you can purchase basic kits. I do not advise anyone to put a lot of monetary investment in. Start working on it, practicing. You know, um, natural artists are the best at decorating. Um, and don't think that it's going to come out right the first time and give up. Continue, continue and believe in yourself. I mean, it's, it's a comfort to be able to bake. I mean, it's a bonus to be able to decorate. So it's a win-win no matter what. I am here with Miss Michelle's cookies with Michelle and Christopher. How are you doing? Doing well yourself? I'm very good. Thank you. So 
Okay, what makes your cookies different from, you know, everyone else's cookies and yeah. Sure, uh, I pride myself that they're gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, and the big thing that's different than the competitors is there's no artificial ingredients and they last soft in the box for eight months due to the packaging. So I'm pretty happy that I do small batches, they're all handmade, it's not from a machine, they're from me and my company, so yeah, I'm excited to be here. That's amazing, so why, like, did you, do you know, just like, baking cookies or like how did that start? Well, uh, long story short, I was a public school teacher and in the summer I would teach kids how to cook. Um, I left teaching to follow my dream which was baking and uh, a lot of the students I was teaching had too many allergies and uh, I wanted to make sure that they could learn how to cook as well as eat something healthy and delicious. So it took off from there. We started in farmers markets and now we're in the stores so it's just amazing. That's amazing. I know being gluten free is like a trend or something these days and like a lot of people have different allergies or something. Yeah, and I, I even heard when I was like setting up, this one lady came over because like she heard they were gluten free. So, uh, how is that different, and what is like the benefits to having gluten free cookies versus like regular cookies? Sure, um, I like to equate it to it's almost like when you have something like sushi where it's all natural, you don't feel very full or you don't feel sick after having like a full meal. Um, I really cater to the people that have celiac, um, but now a lot of people, like you said, are doing it because it's the thing to do. It's gluten free, but it is uh, easier to digest because there is no uh, there's no wheat so it takes the wheat out of the cookie and you could use anything from like chickpea flour rice flour so it's more digestible is the right answer yeah where can people find and purchase your cookies sure so on our website always uh, www.missmichelles.com and we're offering free shipping in the month of October um, and you could also find them in Suffolk County and Nassau County I'm here with David so you are very popular I'm glad I caught you in this like slower time um tell me about your coffee because it's really good. Thank you. Um, Gillies is the oldest coffee roaster in the country. We're a 175 year old family owned business. We've been in the same family now over a hundred years. We roast all of our coffee in Brooklyn. Um, we're doing the cold brew in Brooklyn as well where we're going to retailers, restaurants, cafes, uh, co-working spaces, installing the equipment, maintaining it, and delivering on refrigerated trucks kegs filled with cold brew iced coffee. So what is it like? What is cold brew like? How? What's the difference? So cold brew creates an incredibly smooth, low acidic coffee beverage. It's done by using a higher concentration of coarsely ground coffee, letting it sit overnight in cold water. It's being strained, filtered, and then we add the water, and that's the finished product.